What's up everybody? Thanks for joining me for another video. It's Friday, so you know that means it's time for another Foraging Friday video. Uh, today, one of the first, well, the first plant I'm going to bring you today is a wild strawberry plant. We've got quite a few of them growing on our property here. I'm just kind of looking for one as I walk along with y'all. Uh, we didn't have any that bore any fruit this year on our property. Uh, I'm going to look into what it's going to take to get that to happen in the future. When I was a kid, though, and I used to go hiking all over in the mountains in Montana, we used to find them, especially in higher altitudes, and they're really tiny little strawberries, but they're really delicious. So you can obviously eat the strawberries. I was reading on naturalmedicinalherbs.net. So obviously the fruit is good. Uh, there are some medicinal uses for strawberry. I can't remember exactly what it's for. I think it was for a sunburn. You can put a slice of strawberry on a sunburn, and it will help out with that. But medicinally, most of the uses tend to be with the, the leaves. Uh, you can actually... It's used to treat diarrhea if you dry it and ground it up uh, and ingest it that way. Apparently, it actually makes a pretty good tea, the strawberry leaves do, and apparently kids seem to like the tea is what I've been told. Uh, you can also put it up, grind it up, and put it with some oil in a poultice and use it to treat wounds. Uh, so it has many uses. Honestly, I think a big... <laughs> seems like a lot of these plants have... A lot of them have kind of the same use. It seems like I've actually run into a lot that you can put in a poultice and use it to treat wounds. I think, honestly, my personal, this is my opinion and my belief, but I think that that's probably has a lot to do with the placebo effect. So I did find one here. I spy, so I'm going to turn the camera around and we'll get down here to it. So this little three-leafed thing right here is a wild strawberry plant so there must be a few here uh, here's a another little bunch of them just right here you can see that's what those are in the spring they had nice pretty good sized white flowers on them so like normal I will throw a link in the description of this video to all of the three plants that I cover today uh, but like I said that's the first one there a wild strawberry plant. Like I said, in the spring it'll have white flowers. I'll show some pictures as well of them, what they look like with the flowers and with the fruit on them. But that is a wild strawberry plant, so there you go. And we're going to move on. I'm not going to walk and talk with you the whole time this time. However, just down off this little drop off here is where I'm gonna pick up for the next plant and I'll show you that when I get there. Okay so now I'm down along the county road here that is a easement through our property and I'm coming up on the next one uh, but while I do that and I actually have it pulled up so I can just read to you a little bit about what it is. <laughs> so I'm not just trying to pull it from my memory. Uh, however while I'm walking up to it here, I will just confirm that a slice of strawberry can be used to treat sunburnt skin. So if you're ever out in the, in the woods where there's wild strawberries and you get sunburned, you try that and you never know, you might even be able to try it with one you purchased from the store. I don't, I just looked up specifically wild strawberries, but I would assume that maybe a strawberry you'd buy in the store would also have the same thing. Okay, so this is down where before I took some pictures of nettles, which are down here mixed in among this uh, for one of my, I guess my first Foraging Friday blog. But this here and the thimbleberries, uh, I discussed those and I believe my first blog on foraging. Uh, but now I'm doing videos. So this here, this whole patch of greenery right here kind of looks like raspberry patch is salmonberry. Salmonberry, the Latin name is Rubus spectabilis. And I'm just going to read you here what the medicinal uses are. And then I'll get into the plant a little bit more. I don't have any fruits on any of these, 
Uh, so I'm going to have to show you a picture of the fruit. I don't think it gets a whole lot of sun down here. Well, I know it doesn't get a whole lot of sun, so I think it needs more sun for them to actually bear fruit. But I did get a couple of handfuls as I walked down here earlier this summer. I'll try to get in so you can see it's very similar to a raspberry. It's got, see if I can get it to focus on the stem there. Well, I can't quite get it to focus on the stem, uh, but it is spiny like a raspberry bush. There you can see a little bit better there, I think. Anyhow, let me go ahead and read the medicinal uses of this. And you can see it's mixed all in along here. Kind of thimble berries and that, and then a little bit of stinging nettles mixed in there as well. It says the leaves and the root are astringent. A poultice of the chewed leaves has been used as a dressing on burns. The root bark is an analgesic, astringent, a disinfectic. Uh, decoction is used in the treatment of stomach complaints. And it's also been used to lessen the pains of labor. So there you go. Uh, the powdered bark has been used in dusting powder on burns and sores. A poultice of the bark has been applied to wounds and aching teeth to ease the pain. So it's a painkiller. Uh, it can be uh, if you make a poultice out of the bark. And it says a poultice of the chewed bark has been used as a dressing to relieve pain and clean burns and wounds. Uh, so there you have it. It sounds like uh, you can use a poultice of the root to as a painkiller. So there you go. There's a first kind of painkiller that I've found foraging on my property here. It's giving you a little 360 of our property here. Uh, so these are some trees that we had to cut down to make our new roadway. And I'll show you when we were up top where the rows, or excuse me, where this, when we were up top where the strawberry bush was, and I said we were going to come right off the edge of that, that's what I was talking about. And this is our old road, the original road that went into the property, but it was pretty steep and couldn't really get up it unless you have a four-wheel drive or take a nice run at it. So we made a new road down that way. And I will pick up when I get to the next plant. Okay, and right alongside of our driveway, I found the last species I'm gonna cover today. And this is a fern, and it's just, it's known as the common bracken. The Latin name is Pteridium aquilinum, according to naturalmedicinalherbs.net. The young shoots are diuretic, refrigerant, and they have been eaten as a treatment of cancer. The leaves have been used in a steam bath as a treatment for arthritis. A decoction of the plant has been used in the treatment of tuberculosis. And a poultice of the pounded fronds and leaves has been used to treat sores of any type and also to bind broken bones into place. So there you go. You can use it kind of as a rope to hold things in place. This is the root is an antiseptic and an appetizer and tonic. A tincture of the root in wine is used as the treatment of rheumatism. A tea made from the roots is used in the treatment of stomach cramps, chest pains, and internal bleeding, diarrhea, colds, and also to expel worms. Get out of the way there, pup. What are you doing, huh? What are you doing? Uh, I also thought it was interesting just get this turned around here. I also thought it was interesting. I'm just going to read you this. Uh, it can be eaten raw or cooked. It says it can be dried and ground into a powder. It says the root is very fibrous, so traditionally it was baked after being dried. And the outer skin was peeled off, and the roots were pounded into a powder with sticks so that the inner fibers could be removed, and the dried root will store for years. And it contains 60% starch. It also says this starch can be extracted from the roots and used in making dumplings, which are eaten with uh, soy flour and sugar as a delicacy. It does say the root has a somewhat constipating effect on the body, so it's best eaten with foods that have a laxative quality. So there you go. Who knew? I also had a friend of mine tell me that when they're, I can't see any that are just coming up right now. 
Uh, but I had a friend of mine tell me that, and there's a nice mullein plant here that we have going, uh, that when these shoots first come out of the ground and they just, they get straight and then they kind of curl like that at the tip before the fronds open up like this, apparently then you can clip them and roast them like asparagus or probably boil them like asparagus. I don't like asparagus a whole lot, so uh, I mainly, when I do eat asparagus, uh, I roast it with some garlic and olive oil and stuff like that. So next spring, when these really start coming up, I will probably do the same thing. Here, instead of giving you a shot of my ugly mug, I'll give you a shot of our pup. Uh, he's about five and a half months old right now. That's Scout, shown to you before. Uh, but thank you guys for joining me for this video. And until next time, always remember to live free. Thanks for joining me for this video. If you like my content, share it. It's the best way to support the efforts of this channel and only takes a couple of clicks. Most importantly, stop using big tech platforms and decentralize. Share this from a decentralized and blockchain-based platform to help spread the word about them.